Hi, my name is Robert R. Nielsen Sr. I'm a pioneer of the Canback One and I'm going to take you inside of that uh, very uh, unique computer in just a few minutes and at that time we'll, we'll visit with it and I hope it doesn't take over five minutes. So now let me get ready to take it apart and we'll get ready to... Alright, so here we have my very last can bag. Now I programmed this can bag over 31 years ago and I've got a 3 hour, 3 hour and 17 minute video on that. And uh, I encourage you to get a copy of it so that you can see it. But in the meantime, let's look inside my can bag, my last one, okay? First thing we'll do is remove these handles. Let's see. Take that one off. A little pressure here. Take that one off. Lift the cover very gently. And put that down on the floor. And I'm going to gently lift it from the back so that you can see inside before we begin doing our close-ups, okay? Generally speaking, what you're looking at is the power supply over on this, this side over here, and then you have the fan. I'm sorry, this is the fan. Over here we have the power supply. Over down in here we have the motherboards. And as I tilt back here, you can see all the connections for the no-bounce keys, and those no-bounce keys lead through the, the front panel, like this, into the, uh, for instance, this is the start key, and there are numerous other keys, but we're going to do a real close-up on that. And then, of course, I'm going to enter a program for you, and at that time, this presentation will be over. So at this point in time, we're looking down on the inside of the Canback One. Covers and all have been removed, and uh, I'm going to point in here with my finger just for a minute. But this is one general motherboard. Now, the, the word motherboard had not been coined at the time this computer was made. Now, if you can analyze the small size of the chips in here, you'll find out that there's no chip large enough to be a central processing unit. John V. Blanking, Blankenbaker, the inventor of this machine, had to manufacture with chips his own central processing unit. So here you are taking a look inside the Canback One. Here we have the little fan that's going to keep us cool. Here we have transformers in the power supply. Uh, allowing in some cases 110 volts to run through to, to drive the, uh, drive the uh, cooling system. On the other hand, you have a reduction system power supply which is going to reduce us to the necessary low voltage in order to run the computer. Now we'll see if we can get our camera uh, person to uh, zoom in and give you some real close-ups of uh, the printed circuit card and some of these chips. And we'll zoom in. Okay, not too fast. There, there you go. Now look, look at that beautiful printed circuit card, and look at the uh, chips and the chip spacing, which allows for uh, real good cooling. All right, zoom back out, and if you can, swing the camera just a little bit left and right. Easy does it. There you go. Just a little, little left and right, so that we can see. Let's zoom in on that other side. Zoom. Let's zoom in on the other side. Let's zoom. Zoom over there. That's a good shot. Now let's go to the complete other side of the can bag. There you go. That's good. Now do a little zoom right there. Okay, a little bit further over to the left. There you go. A little bit more of a zoom now. There you go. Good. I think that'll do it for the internals. So first thing I'm going to do is put the power on switch and then I'm going to hit start, this is start key, stop key and clear so that I can clear all of my memory read lights. Now I'm not going to beat this to death because we've already got a three hour uh, video on programming the CAN bag. 
But as an example, I'm going to uh, teach you, assuming you know a little bit about binary. If you don't, you need to look at the video. All right. This is a binary 1, clear. This is a binary 2, clear. This is binary 3, clear. This is binary 4, clear. This is binary 5, clear. This is binary 6, clear. This is binary 7, and we're dealing in an octal system. So when we add 1 to 7, we automatically get 10. So I'll hit clear, and there's the carry. We have 10. Now we have 11, clear. Now we have 12, clear. Now we have 13, clear. And I'll put in 17 for you. 17, 1, this is 10, and 7 is 17, clear. Then I'll add 1 to 17, and that will give us 20. 2, 0, 20. Now I'll do 27 for you. Add 1 to 27, you're going to get 30. So I hit clear, and here we have 3, 0, clear. Now I'm going to move, make a quantum leap. I'm going up to 3. This is the hundreds position. It's uh, tens position, units position. 3, 7, 7, 377, which is the maximum that we can program into a 256-byte uh, computer. And we call it 377. It's really uh, 256 in, in pure binary. And I'm going to hit clear. Now we have a program counter. It's located at dedicated memory cell 3. In cell 3, I'm going to hit this set key. I'm pointing at memory cell 3 and the memory that you just saw on the motherboard. I'm going to hit clear. In memory cell 3, I'm going to say start my program at cell 5. And I'm coming over to the store key and I'm going to depress that. So memory cell 3 just picked up a 5. Clear. Now let's verify that. We dial in memory cell 3, press the set key, the clear key, and then we hit the read key. We're not storing data. We want to see what is already stored. Read. And as you recall, we put a 5 in there, and there's the 5. So now we're going to hit clear. All right, at memory cell 6, 4 plus 2 in, in, in binary is 6. Set, clear. At cell 6, I want to put in the add command, which is a 4. So I press the binary 4, and I hit store. Sale 6 has just received a 4. I'm going to hit clear and to prove it. Dial in sale 6, hit set, hit clear. Now say, I'm pointing at sale 6, please tell me what's in there, Mr. Computer. Press read, and he says there's a 4, which is the add command that was inserted in sale 6. So what we have here is we have uh, the, the necessary memory cells represented here and the, and the necessary key is to point at that memory and arithmetic registers and so forth and so on over here. Now once the program is entered we have a lock key. We can do that and nobody can interfere with your program until such time as the computer's cut off or we can unlock it you know if you want to uh, put in variables and things of that nature. Uh, one of the things that I would like to point out to you down here at the bottom, instead of the CANBAC label, we have the CTI Educational Products Incorporated label. Now anyone that's read the autobiography that I've written about myself and my experience with this CANBAC uh, One computer will realize that CTI bought John V. Blankenbaker and CANBAC Incorporated out. They were very unsuccessful in selling uh, these CANBAC computers and they never manufactured any of their own. What we have here is a, a can back that was manufactured by John V. Blankenbaker, shipped to CTI, uh, the label can back taken off, the CTI label uh, impressed where the can back label was. Now, unfortunately, CTI was unable to sell the can back one computer, which they renamed as the H5050. 
they couldn't sell the computer and uh, eventually CTI uh, dropped the product line and and ultimately went out of business so this is the this is that little introduction I haven't uh, been on on the videos I haven't done anything uh, with the can back now and uh, on video for almost 31 years however it was used in my junior college Nielsen Electronics Institute for over 31 years